Symmetrical components are one of the most important and crucial transformations in electricity. In this video, we will step by step explain what they are and how to use them. Here's the game plan. First, we will start by introducing the need for symmetrical components through a practical situation. Then, we'll define what a balanced system is. After that, we will introduce the symmetrical components and demonstrate their mathematical link with an unbalanced system. And finally, we'll put everything together to see how the symmetrical components actually work. This is Nick with Style and I'm excited to do this with you. Let's picture three ideal generators oscillating with balanced voltages, representing the three phases of a three-phase system. Let's then attach the same purely resistive load to each phase. Now, if a three-phase short circuit appears at some location, the voltage at that spot becomes zero due to the balanced nature of these voltages. We'll uncover the precise and intriguing reason behind this later in the video. So, everything downstream of the fault loses its power supply because the voltage is null. Consequently, we can detach that section of the circuit like a dead branch off of a tree. In real life, when a short circuit like this occurs, equipments such as breakers and relays must respond to remove the faulty part of the system. To design these breakers and fine-tune the relay settings with precision, we often need to calculate the short circuit current, and it is absolutely vital to do so. To do that, we first replace the wires with their corresponding impedance up to the fault location, then we simply apply Ohm's law to determine the current flowing in each phase. Since we only care about the magnitude, we end up with a clean formula that depends on the line impedances and the voltage amplitude. Also, the RMS magnitude of the three currents is exactly the same, only the angle shifts between them. We were able to find the current so effortlessly only because the source is balanced and the fault is applied equally on all three phases. But what if that was not the case? What if the system was unbalanced? How do we find the short circuit currents then? Well, Stick around till the end of the video to find out. First, before diving into the unbalanced system, we need to define what an ABC balanced three phase system actually is. Let's begin by drawing the three balanced voltages over time. These are three identical sine waves, each perfectly shifted from the others by an angle of 2 pi over 3, which means their phases are evenly spaced around a circle in the complex plane. They all oscillate at the same frequency, either 50 or 60 Hz, depending on which side of the planet you're on. And they all share the same magnitude, Vm in this case. As we scan the waveforms from the left to the right, we observe phase A, then B, then C, then back to A, B, C again, always in A, B, C order. The final and most crucial trait of a balanced system is this one. At any instant in time, the sum of the three voltages is exactly zero. This is precisely why we don't need a neutral wire in a balanced three-phase system as long as that balance holds, of course. There are three kinds of balanced systems, referred to as sequences. The first is called the positive ABC balanced sequence. It is composed of three phases, A, B, and C, and is indicated by the subscript 1. The three phasers have the same magnitude, are equidistantly spaced around the circle and separated by phase shifts of 2 pi over 3. 
they also rotate at the same frequency, which is, as we said before, either 50 Hz or 60 Hz. If we were to place an observer anywhere on the grid, they would see the phases pass in the order A, then B, then C, hence the name positive sequence. The final characteristic is the balanced nature of these phasers. At any instant, if we place the vectors head to tail, they form a closed triangle returning to zero. So, the sum of the three phases is always null. The second balanced system is called the negative sequence. The only difference compared to the positive sequence is that phases B and C are swapped. It is indicated using the subscript 2 instead of 1. This time, when the phasers rotate, the observer on the grid would encounter A, then C, then B, hence the name negative sequence. The last balanced system is called the zero sequence, indicated by the subscript zero. This one is not truly balanced. It consists of three phasers equal in magnitude and in phase, rotating at the same speed. This sequence is called zero sequence because it is expected to be zero in normal operation when the system is balanced. We'll start by expressing the three unbalanced voltages as the sum of three components. The first corresponds to the positive sequence, the second to the negative sequence, and the third is the zero sequence. Now let's find a concise formulation for these equalities. We know that phase B of the positive sequence is identical to phase A, but lags by 2 pi over 3. We can then replace in the equations phase B. Similarly, phase C is the same as phase A, but leads by 2 pi over 3. We can then replace phase C in the equations. Next, for the negative sequence, phase B leads phase A by 2 pi over 3. We can do the replacement, and phase C lags by 2 pi over 3, and we can replace it in the equation. Finally, for the zero sequence, all three phases are equal in both magnitude and angle. We can replace phase B and phase C of the zero sequence in the equations. So, for each sequence, we only need one variable, giving us a total of three variables, which makes sense since we shouldn't need more than three independent variables to fully describe the original three unbalanced phase voltages. To further simplify the formulation, we introduce an operator A, representing a rotation of 2 pi over 3 in the complex plane, and substitute it into the equations. Now, observe what happens when we calculate A squared. We express the exponent as 6 minus 2, then apply exponential rules to write it as a product of two complex numbers. The first term represents a 2 pi rotation, which is equivalent to multiplying by 1. So we get a squared is exponential of j minus 2 pi over 3. This makes sense, since two counterclockwise rotations of 2 pi over 3 should be equivalent to a single clockwise rotation of 2 pi over 3. We can now express these relationships as a matrix multiplication. This is known as Fortescue transformation. It converts the three symmetrical components into the original three-phase system. In practice, we often want to decompose an unbalanced system into its three symmetrical components to make analysis easier. To do that, we invert the matrix, giving us what is called the inverse Fortescue transformation. Let's apply the inverse Fortescue transformation to a random unbalanced system. From a simple matrix multiplication, we obtain the positive sequence,
the negative sequence, which we place head to tail with the positive one. And finally, the zero sequence to achieve equality with the original vectors. We need to keep in mind that all the vectors here are rotating at the same frequency. Let's then examine a practical case, a line-to-line -line fault between phases B and C, for example, which is a typical fault that can occur in a three-phase system. In this case, the phase voltages B and C are essentially the same, assuming the fault impedance is low, and phase A remains mostly unchanged. Some observations give us insight into what the sequences actually represent. First, the zero sequence is null. This is because it is proportional to the current flowing through the neutral line. But in this case, since no conductor is in contact with the ground, the neutral voltage does not rise. Second, the positive and negative sequences are equal. This is because the negative sequence reflects the power returning to the source. In this scenario, the current in line B returns via line C, hence the equality between the two sequences. We have reached the end for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this overview of symmetrical components helpful and insightful. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more electrical engineering tutorials.